If you haven't heard, there are going to be massive changes to the Power 5 conference next year. The first major move was when UCLA and USC announced they would join the Big Ten. This would be the beginning of the end of the Pac-12, which we will get into in a minute. If you were like me, you were probably in denial and hoping it would stop here. This couldn't be any further from reality. From a revenue-generating standpoint, losing USC and UCLA is something the Pac will never fully recover from. This caused a massive exodus from other Pac-12 teams. This is where things get absolutely ridiculous. Six teams leave the Pac-12 in a relatively short time span. Arizona, Arizona State, Colorado, and Utah join the Big 12. Oregon and Washington follow USC and UCLA and join the Big 10. This leaves four schools left in the Pac-12, and none of the other Power Fives want them. The markets aren't particularly attractive to them, especially when it comes to football, which is the driving force behind these realignments. As of the time of this video, there hasn't been news of any ACC teams leaving to go to other conferences. There's been speculation, but nothing concrete. This would destroy a lot of rivalries as well. But to be fair, I think the odds of the ACC imploding are lower. It's the only Power Five that prioritizes basketball over football, but they aren't completely out of the woods. Greed trumps all. Now here's where the real problems start. The three remaining conferences, Big Ten, Big 12, and the SEC have way too many teams. Power Fives play 18 in conference games. This is enough to give teams the opportunity to play certain teams at least twice in the same season. Not anymore. The Big Ten now has a staggering 18 teams. There is no room for rematches. If you are close to a team and they are playing a team you want to see, but it's an away game, you are out of luck unless you have a plane ticket. The SEC has 18 teams. The Big 12 has 16 teams now, so expect similar issues from those conferences as well. If you are annoyed that South Carolina and LSU only seem to play once a year, expect this problem to continue. Indiana and Purdue sell out every time they play each other, and is must-see TV. Now instead of two games where they switch home sites, they will be stuck to playing once a year. There are a million other examples you can bring up as well. Furthermore, at-large bids are going to be a serious problem. There was a huge controversy with Rutgers, Vanderbilt, and North Carolina not getting an at-large bid in the men's tournament. The women's bracket had no shortage of snubs either, such as Columbia and Oregon. This problem is about to get 10 times worse for the 2024 tournament. When you have conferences having 16 to 18 teams, you're going to have teams that are easily tournament worthy, but not seem impressive because of their record. If you thought the snubs were bad now, just wait until all the conference realignments are finished. This is going to tank the quality of the tournament, especially in the early rounds. It will be filled with more underwhelming teams that have great records, but it's due to weaker competition. These teams will get smoked, which won't be fun for anyone. Are there any benefits to conference realignment from a basketball perspective? I think all the benefits are from the Big 12. The women's Big 12 has been nothing short of garbage since Kim Mulkey departed from Baylor. Adding Arizona, Colorado, and Utah will raise the quality of play from that conference. Houston men's team has consistently given us great basketball, so they deserve to be in a Power 5 conference. They are also replacing UT Austin, which will help keep the Texas school rivalries going. I highlighted basketball in this video, but it's really bad for all sports not named football. They are destroying the student-athlete experience, which they claim is the priority. Have fun getting work done when you have to fly across the country every other day. They want to talk about how only college football and men's basketball generate revenue, but will make moves that make it almost impossible for other sports to improve their revenue. Travel expenses are going through the roof for those sports, and they are losing out on key games that they used to draw people into the sport. I'll end the video here because I could rant about it forever. If you couldn't tell, I'm not happy about it. What do you think about conference realignment? Is it good for basketball or bad? Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching and I will see you later.